pray. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for Mrs. Moshiri. We want to commit her to you, dear Father. Lord, may you order her lips, her mind, and all her intellect, dear Lord, that as she ministers to your people, dear Father, you will use her as her vessel, dear Father. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. When I yes was if you praise the Lord, people. Salimiane. Amen. Amen. It's a blessing to be here. I thank God. As you've heard, I'm Nancy, I'm boy, Mushiri. I'm born again this morning. I love the Lord. He is my personal savior. And I love him so much. The Bible says he loved me before I knew him. Yes, and I'm happy to be in fellowship with him. He's a good God, I can assure you. He's good and he's loving, he's caring. He can do all things. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I am a, a, actually a child of this church. Hallelujah. So you can ask how I got born again here in this church many, many, many years ago. That time the church, uh, this, this used to be somewhere there. So you can imagine when that was. In the 19, Hatukwa Tumefika 2000. Now you can try and uh, do the maths many, many years ago. And uh, it's not about the many years. It's about the fellowship in the Lord. That's most important. I thank God. I, I was prayed for here by Bishop. So I'm a child of this house. And when I'm here, I'm home. It's true. I'm a teacher in Cornerstone. I've been there for many, many, also many, many years. I don't know whether there are some students of those days, of 2000s there. Could there be any alumni? Wow, they are here. Yes, those are my babies. Love you girls. And are there young men there? Yeah, they are smiling nicely. Yeah, so uh, I've been here for some time. And uh, something else, I've, I'm not alone. I came with a member of my family. My daughter is here. Come on, Lillian. Lillian is here. Wave to the club. That's Lillian. I expected her to stand when they, now you can see it, when um, we said visitors, but I remember we used to come here in church here, so she's not a Mugeni. She remembered those days, I think she was still in primary then when we used to come to this church, before uh, our church was planted in Sukari by this church. My sister Washo knows that history I'm talking about. So 98, we moved to Sukari from this church, a 25 member church. And we started off in Sukari in 1998, up to date. Again, uh, Sukari also in 2011 uh, uh, planted another church in Muihoko. That's where I serve, in Kizito, Deliverance Church. That's my church. I, I patron Sunday school, and I thank God for the opportunity to serve him. The Lord has been good to me. The family is, is bigger than what you see, myself and Lillian. There are two, there are four more people, even not four, more than four. Because together with Lillian are two boys. Uh, and the two boys are young men now. They are grown, they are married, and they have wives. And the wives, together with the, the, the young men and the girls now, they have brought in three more. So we have three grandchildren. Are you seeing? Anyway, I'm here to talk about <laughs> I'm here to talk about Jesus, but it's good also to to, to talk of what He has done. That's where the Lord has brought us, and so um, I, I, I I thank God for the children and the grandchildren, and they're still counting. We thank God for what He has done, given us life, given us the strength to be here, the grace. It is all by it is Him who has done it, and we are grateful. As I, as I, I, I prayed and, uh, and uh, as we sat and organized for this and uh, sat together with the teachers and we, we asked ourselves, so what is this about Cornerstone Sunday? And they talked about these exams, KCP, KCSE, you know, many, many other things there. And as I prayed, I, the Lord was leading me into something about victory through battle. Victories, it could be victories. They could be battles, it could be a victory, it could be a battle, whatever you call it. You just break it down the way the Lord helps you. But mine is victory or victories through battle. Did you know that you when, you, when you came to the Lord, you enrolled into a battle? Did you know? Did you know? 
Did you know that, or do you know that you enrolled into a battle? There are many, and they come in all sizes and shapes, and they are in a season, any time. Or when, when things are looking like it's easy now, then something else comes up. And sometimes you don't even know where, how. Sometimes you're coming from one, another time you're getting into one, another time. Is, somebody, is there somebody who is not going through something right now? Can we see you? That you are not going through something. Remember I said through. You are going through. One has fierce and I think that is the best thing about it. We are going through something. Every one of us. Anyone who has come out of something. A big thing. Who has come out of a big thing. A big battle. Praise the Lord. I am not alone. I have also come out of one. Not even one. There were many. But the Lord has delivered me. So we are saying. If one of us is coming out of one. Getting into one. Or uh, whichever. So we are talking about victory now through those battles. Could be it is, uh, I could give a few examples of some of the things that we go through. Some are physical, others are spiritual. Some could be a, a, a diagnosis that has come f f from the doctor and it is, that doesn't look good. And you're looking at it, you are wondering, now from here, where do we go? It could be a life threatening illness. That doctor's report, it could be uh, children, one or could be two of them, could be they, 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 they don't seem to know you are Christian and them you brought them up in the way of the Lord and they don't seem to get it at some point you don't know, where are these people going, you don't understand and you are praying, could be the exams are ahead of you, anyone who, KCP KCP, where are you Oh, they are there. You can see them. They are in one already. One has fear sana. Yeah, it is. Masomo. Is it easy to go to school and come out with grades? Is it, is it easy? It is not. We tell them to get A's like we got A's all the time. It's not easy. We are teachers. We know it. They struggle a lot. They go through a lot every day and especially in Christ because it becomes uh, it's, it's so pressurizing. We pressure. We want marks and it is not easy. That is another one. KCSE. Anyone? KCSE? Where are they? KCSE. Yeah. There is somebody there. A parent. Yeah, putting up her hand for the children. Another one here. So all this. We have issues of finances. Could be a business, a business that is down. Could be a, a job opportunity that you're waiting for and not coming forth. You've given your, your, your CVs. You've given everything. Praying and waiting upon God. Could be studies that you started off and you delayed by luck. Something happened in the family. You couldn't go on. You didn't get to where you wanted to be or where you thought you could go to. And things are not working. You are not in school. You are not in college because something happened there. You are praying. It could be a marriage that is not going right. There are struggles in there and you know it. Putting a very brave face. Yeah, but you know it. You cannot hide it from God or from yourself. You know it. It's a struggle somewhere. You're praying. Could be ministry. What God has spoken into your heart concerning serving him and you desire to do so. And things are not, don't seem like this is what really, and you're praying, asking God for direction. God, speak to my heart. Speak to me. Give me a word. And you are there on your knees. Hallelujah. Could be family. It could be extended family issues that are coming up upon your family, upon your marriage. There are many. could be salvation. You, are, you saved yourself, maybe as a mother or a father or as a wife, as a husband. And the children are not. Maybe your parents are not. Maybe your siblings are not. And you are crying. You are praying and fasting, asking God, when is this going to happen? There are many. There are many, 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 many issues around us. And uh, I've brought a word of encouragement. I've brought a word of encouragement. Through all the issues of life, I have a word from the Lord. You know what the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12? The word of God is what? Is active. Is living and active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates through the spirit, the, the spirit and the soul. It, it, at the joints and the marrow. It, it, uh, come on, let's look at this one. Hebrews 4.12. We have somebody putting up the scriptures. Or I read mine. I write 4.12. says, for the word of God is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing, soul and, uh, to dividing soul and spirit. Joints and marrow. It judges uh, the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. The word of God. So we are going to look at the word of God. And see 
a, a few instances in the Bible uh, concerning uh, battles that were won, concerning victories that were won by the people of old, and especially in the Old Testament, where we see battles being won to encourage us that we keep on, to encourage us that we keep the battle on, that we keep the light on, that we keep the prayer on, we keep the fasting on, we keep on believing the word of God. Are we together? Yes, let's go. And when you hear like I'm treating you like children, I've been a teacher all my life. So my language is about a teacher with people. Although as I prayed there, the spirit of God spoke and he said that uh, now you've been telling people, now sit, I will minister to you too. Because you are just like anybody else. And so I humble so that I be ministered to. I'm not a teacher. The spirit of God is a teacher here. He is taking control. So I'm humbled. I surrender to the word of God so that I be taught to. Are we there? We are together. So victory is sure. That is what I'm saying. Over all the situations because we, God is with us and victory is believing God through every issue. Not it is it is it, it means that victory is possible. This life that the, the, the life in Christ is not a life without issues. I've just narrated a few of them that victory in Christ is not a life without issues. It's not a life without problems. It's not a life without pain. It's not a life without persecution. It's, we tell people to come to the Lord. What we don't say, but as we continue to, to bring them up, we talk to them about the issues of life and what is going to happen and what has been happening in their life. But we tell them now to trust in God. So we are saying we trust in God. One of the verses that I found there was Hebrews. One of the, 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 the verses I want, I want us to look at is Hebrews 11 uh, verse 32 uh, to 35. This one says victory comes through faith. And uh, we, we know very well that faith is the assurance of things hoped for. Faith is about confidence. It's about assurance. It is believing uh, God's uh, character. God is who he is. He says what he will do. He, he, he will do what he says. Believing that. That what his word says is what he will do. What he says he will do, he will actually do it. We just believe in the word of God. So we have a list of people who through faith in Hebrews, Hebrews 11, verse 32 to 35. If we get it up there quickly so that we see it. 32 to 35. We are there. We could read together. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they might uh, gain a better resurrection. Yes, uh, the God we are talking about, as we have faith in God, is that we can be in the list, like those who are in the list in the Bible, of those who believed God, of those who waited upon God, or those who conquered kingdoms. We can be those who conquered diseases and sicknesses. We can be in the list of those who got healed because of believing God. We can be in the list of those who came out of depression because of believing in God. It is possible we can be listed just like that. We may not write another Bible, but we could be in the list of those who believed God. Praise the Lord. Jesus knows. He understands our fears and our weaknesses and our disappointments. He promises he will never leave us nor forsake us. Believe in the word of God this morning. He will never leave you in that situation. He will never forsake you. He is coming through for you. I said I brought a word of encouragement this morning. He will not leave us. He intercedes on our behalf in terms of persecution, in terms of pain, in terms of suffering. Let's trust him. Hallelujah. Let's trust him. He keeps his promises. The second one is in Judges 7 verse 21. It says, victory depends upon Obedience and commitment to God. This is the time of Gideon. The time of Gideon in, in the book of Judges. Chapter 7. Verse 20 to 21 there. There you go. 
Judges 7, 20, 20 to 21. Mm -hmm. The verse is up there. The verses are up there. Amen. Powerful. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands and trumpets. They were to blow. They shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran crying out as they fled. Hallelujah. The enemies are going to cry out as they do what? As they leave. We are saying victory depends upon obedience and commitment to God. This army of 300, remember at first there were how many? 32,000 people. You remember the Lord's killing the, the number down until there were how many? 300. That, the story is along. You, you can read for yourself how things went. But at the end of it all, we had 300 men. That is the army that God is using with Gideon here. And they, they, they watched, you know, Gideon's army of 300. They watched. Walijiangaliria. Mungu akitawanya maadwizao. Wanasfue sana. They watched in awe. As the army of, Midian, of the Midianites fell into panic, they fell, listen to this, they fell into panic, confusion, and disordered retreat. Yes, because God was with Gideon and his army. He made the army of the Midianites to do what? To run. To run. Kukimbia. Ushaona adui akikimbia. Alikimbia. Adui atakimbia. That is what we are saying. Let's keep the faith. Yes, Gideon's small army of 300 men could not have brought such a victory on its own. They were just 300. On it, in its own strength, they could not. But God, God, listen to this. God wanted to demonstrate to Israel that victory depends not on strength or numbers, but on obedience and commitment to him. Let's remain committed, committed and obedient to God and his word. And the enemy will flee. There will be nothing before our God. As long as we continue believing, being committed to God. Hallelujah. Victory. Victory. Victory comes from continually renewing our commitment to God. So this commitment we are talking about, continue renewing. Continue. Don't stop. Continue. Usiache, usitoke hapo, endelea. Continue. Continue renewing your commitment to God. Let's look at 1 Samuel 4, verse 5 to 8. Powerful. Powerful. We bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for ministering to your people this morning. Oh, we bless the Lord. Don't you love this God? Isn't he a good God? Hasn't he been a good God to us? Are we there? Wow. It's a long one. And maybe we could... Uh, it's, it's about the Philistines here. And... Uh, and, the, and uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we could read. Why not read? Verse 5. When the Ark of the Lord's Covenant came into the camp, all Israel raised such a, a great shout that the ground shook. Hearing the uproar, the Philistines asked, what's all this shouting in the Hebrew camp? When they learned that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid. These are enemy tribes. Are you listening to the words that the Bible is, the word of God is using? The enemies were afraid. Mm, are you getting something? The enemies were afraid. A God has come. That's what they are telling one another. A God has come into the camp. They said, we are in trouble. Ay, the enemy is in trouble. Are you hearing what the spirit of God is saying? But the enemy is in trouble. A man is in trouble. Nothing like this has happened before. Oh, hallelujah. Up to verse, we say it verse 8, yeah? Yes, so the enemy, the enemy here says we, they were afraid and they say they are in trouble. So what we are saying here is that the Pharisees were afraid because they had had stories of what God had done to the children of Israel in Egypt. The deliverance that had happened in Egypt. Yes, you know the enemy tribes, they're just around. Wanaskia. So they were thinking, hey, now what God has done the other side, he will do. And they were afraid. But then Israel had gone back to sin. They had disobeyed God now. So much as God would have wanted to fight for them, they had disobeyed him. And as you read, you realize the Philistines defeated them. They fought them. They defeated them. We are saying, let's continue renewing our commitment to God. 
Let's not talk about the past, what God did yesterday. Let's talk about the freshness of what God is doing today. Let's continue renewing our commitment. They remembered how God had delivered Israel from Egypt. But now Israel had turned away from God. They were clinging only to a form of godliness. Yeah, a symbol of former victories. They thought God would do it again, though they had strayed from him. We are saying spiritual victories come through a continued, renewed relationship with God. And we are saying, don't leave off the past. Keep your relationship with God new and fresh. For God to fight your battles, keep your relationship with God new and fresh. Tell your neighbor, keep your relationship with God new and fresh. Come on, help me say that. It keep your relationship. I said when you see me do like a teacher, please accept it. I'm a teacher. That is what I know how to do. Yes. Prayer. When last? By the way, when is this? There is a prayer session that goes on here. How many know this? Anyway, don't carry up your hands. It's okay. How many know we have a prayer session that goes on here on Wednesdays? You know, I live here. I've been here t- since 2002. So I know the programs that run here, I know every one of them. And I participate when I, I am around. Wednesday, there is prayer for us. Mm. In the afternoon and in the evenings. Yes, this place is open for prayer. Those who are available, come we pray. Don't wait until Sunday. Come we pray. Pray in your fellowships. Are there fellowships near you? Hallelujah. Are there family altars where you live? Yes, prayer. When last did you read the word of God? Other than when we are here, like now we are reading together. Another time when you read? There's a program in our church. It's called CBRSM. It was introduced to us from Nyeri of a, a, a man called J.R. Gitonga. And it's a discipline of reading the word of God. I had struggled to read through the Bible from Genesis to Revelation for a long time. Who else has a testimony like mine? Or oh, you don't say hey, this is a good place. We don't struggle. Hey, 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 hey. We have read through the Bible again and again. Well, well. <laughs> all right, all right. Sita and Hapo. But I'm saying the discipline really helped me to read through the word of God. I am in my third round now, reading the Bible. Genesis to Revelation. Now I want you to hear that, to hear that one. Yes, I'm not bragging. This is the third round. And the Lord is still speaking to me, even through the scriptures that I read the other day. One as few as Anna. Let's be readers of the word, studying the word, meditating upon the word of God. One as few as Anna. That's the, the way we keep our relationship with God fresh and new. One as few as Anna. Yes, and singing and uh, praising the Lord and going into fellowships where there are brethren. Don't waste your time out there. The Bible says, blessed are those who do not, you know what they do not do. But their delight is in the what? In, the, in meditating on what? On the word of God. And then they become like a what? A tree that has been planted where? By the side of what? The river which bears fruit in season. Whose leaves does not do what? Wither. And what they do do what? Does what? Amen. Praise the Lord. Because the Lord watches over the way of the? Ah, come on. Upright and the righteous. But the way of the wicked will do what? Will perish. Hallelujah. We have Bible readers here. Now I don't know about time. <laughs> Victory comes from recognizing you can't win alone. Hallelujah. Did you hear that? In 2 Chronicles 14, verse 11. 2 Chronicles 11, 14, verse 11. Let's go there quickly. Amen. 14. Verse 11, let's hear something else here that tells us that uh, the Lord is at work. Hallelujah. 14, verse 11. Aha. Good. Then Asa called to the Lord, his God, and said, Lord, there is no one like you to help the powerless against the mighty. Help us, O Lord, for we rely on you, and in your name we have come against this vast army. Oh Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. Praise the Lord. This is another one. It says victory comes from recognizing you cannot win alone. And we are saying don't give up. If you are facing a battle that you can't possibly win, don't give up. Stay on. Praise the Lord. Stay on. This is our king. You know when we are talking about our king, he's a powerful person. You can compare to our president, yeah? 
He's powerful. He wants the army. They can stand before him. He wants the the wengine wa hewani wanaitwa aje air force. Si wanaweza kuja. Akitaka wale wa maji si wote watakuwa pale. Akiitana at his command. This is a king, Asa. And he realizes the battle is bad. Is 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 is, uh, is bad. And he asked for help. He is a king, the king of Judah. Who does right? Some did wrong. Some did evil. But this king Asa is one of those who did right in the eyes of the Lord. So he had, he could call upon God, and he did so. He called upon God. The armies had come against him, and he asked for help in the face of vast hordes of enemy soldiers. He asked for help from God. He recognized his powerlessness against such a mighty army that was coming against him. He asked for help. The secret to victory is first to admit the futility of unaided human effort. Did you hear that? The futility of unaided human effort. Your human effort with no aid is futile. And mine too. Is futile. We trust God to save. You know what? His power works best through those who recognize their limitations. Those who think they can do it on their own are in the greatest danger. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. What will he do? He will make your paths straight. Trust in the Lord. Call upon his name. As I did, he was a king. And the Lord delivered him. The other one is that victory sometimes, or often, often, often takes a lot of time. Joshua eleven eighteen. This is familiar of Joshua uh, when he was conquering the rats for Israel. This one, we can read in one sitting how it happened in Joshua 11 verse 18. We can read a verse there and see what happened here. But we are saying this conquest could look like it happened just in a day or two or a week. But the Bible records here, or the Bible says somewhere, or some research or some uh, study of the Bible says that the conquest of uh -huh. The land for Israel, the land that God had promised the children of Israel, actually took seven years. It didn't take a week or two weeks. It didn't take a year or two years. It took seven years. The conquest, the one that we can read in the Bible and read while we are seated, it took seven years of battle. It took seven years. Victory often takes a lot of time. The conquest of much of the land, uh, as we read through, I am, as I'm saying, uh, could maybe we could think it took a, a, a little time, but it took seven years. We often expect quick changes in life. This is what I, I, I wrote as I prepared. We often expect quick changes in life, quick victories over sin. But let's remember that the journey with God, our journey with God, is a lifelong process. It's a lifelong process. And changes and victories may take time. It's easy sometimes to grow impatient with God and feel like giving up hope because things are mo moving too slowly. When we are, uh, and when we are close to a situation, we don't see progress. When we look back, <laughs> we can see that God never stopped working. We look back, you look back at the, the healing of your child, you, you can tell God was still working. Even when it looked like the child was not getting better, the Lord was still working. I remember praying when I, came, I, I received Jesus in my heart in this church and I started to understand and the Lord showed me the way to pray. My husband wasn't born again. And I remember praying for Mr. Mushiri for 18 years. Mm, 18. 18. 18. 18 years. Anasifiwe. Anasifiwe. Victory often takes a lot of? Yes, and when he rested in the Lord, he rested a, bo a brother. Hallelujah. What joy. Yes, and God gave him a year and a half. Mrs. Kimati is a witness. Yes, to testify of the goodness of the Lord. Victory often takes a lot of time. We look back, you can still, God was still working. Even when they are not born again. Even when the children are sick or the, the parent is unwell. Even when finances don't seem, they seem to be running away from you. God is still working. Whatever situation is there, God is still working. KCP students, where are you? God is still 
working. Even when the marks don't seem like coming. You had 350, now you have 320. God is still working. Tell your friend, God is still working. And victory is coming. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but I thank God. Higher. Then we can talk about something else. We can have victory despite the odds. Uh, just what we are saying. I think we are, sometimes we are repeating. Joshua 11 verse 1 to 5. Let's go back to Joshua. I love Joshua. It's ab about a king called Jabin. There are two kings here called Jabin, but this one, hey, this one is a king here. Uh -huh. we, are, we, are we are going to talk about. This one uh, knows what to do. He knows what to do. And he tries. But uh, hey, let's see what happens. Joshua 11 verse 1 to 5. Are you there? When Jabin, king of Hazor, heard of this, he sent word to Jobab, king of Madon, to the kings of Shimron and Asfa, and to the northern kings who were in the mountains, in the Araba, south of Kinnereth, in the western foothills, and in a fourth door on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and west, to the Amorites, the Hittites, Perizzites, and Jebusites in the hill country, and to the Hivites below Hamon in the region of Mizpah. They came out with all their troops and a large number of horses and chariots, a huge number, as numerous as the sand on the seashore. All these kings joined forces and made camp together at the waters of Merom to fight against Israel. He listened to that. A king with many other kings and the Canaanites and the Jebusites, all the enemies of Israel, they come together to fight against Israel. It doesn't matter the enemies that have come against you. However many they are, hata kama ni wengi aje, hata kama wanajiita majina gani, haijalishi, unaenda daktari anasema sukari iko juu siju iko chini. Unaenda siju anasema ati kuna hiyo ingine ni gani anasema eh, sukari iko eh, siju ni bipi nayo siju iko 200. Anasema siju iko gani? It is okay. That is his work. Si ni kweli daktari. Eh yeah, hiyo ndio kazi anafanya. Lakini Mungu anasema nini? What is the report of the Lord? What happens here is that uh, this king uh, when he heard of the victories of Israel through Joshua there before in chapter 10. He had heard about it. So he decided, hey, how are what to sisu to Ganewegi against Israel? Because God is fighting for them. And he built an alliance with many kings and the enemy tribes of Israel. You know what? He had a clear advantage over Joshua and his outnumbered forces. Because they couldn't match the armies of Israel in terms of numbers. He couldn't. They couldn't. The, the, the children of Israel, the armies of Israel were fewer as compared to this one. But those who know, who honor God, can be victorious. Are you listening? Those who honor God can be victorious regardless of the odds. Those who honor God can be victorious. Whatever the odds that are against us, Joshua won this one. It didn't matter the armies that came. It didn't matter the, the names of the kings and the, uh, the, 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 the enemies of Israel. God was on their side. He fought for them. And there was great victory. If you continue reading, I love this word. There's a lot of it, of the word of God. There's a lot of encouragement from the word of God. We are saying we can have victory despite their odds. You could be, God provides against uh, uh, what we may look at and think we, 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 we are no match for what is ahead of us. God is able. It doesn't matter. He did it for Joshua. And when you are victorious, acknowledge God's role in victory. When you are victorious, acknowledge God's role in victory. In First Chronicles 18, 13, it's about David. This one is about David. Let's read one more. First Chronicles 18. Verse 13. He put garrisons in Edom, and the, all the Edomites became subject to David. And the powerful verse there, the Lord gave David victory everywhere he went. Are you hearing that? The Lord gave David victory everywhere he went. The Lord is giving us victory. We are believing in this word. The Lord is giving us victory. David is victorious. He acknowledges God. He acknowledges that it is God. It is God's hand that is 
upon him. It is God who has done it for him. Some of us may look at ourselves and say, Najua ni vile nilitia bidii kwa hiyo masomo. Ndio nilipita nikakuwa na bawani. Unajua ni kwa sababu ya vile mzazi wangu alifanya. Unajua ni kwa sababu ya vile mimi ni minister wa gospel na mimi hii neno naikanyagia vizuri. Oh my God. We have nothing of our own. We are vessels in God's hands. Bwana asifiwe sana. Let us acknowledge God's role in our victory. It works well when we acknowledge God. So that we humble. Like I am saying this morning that the spirit of God is saying, I sit and be ministered to. I am a teacher. But this morning, who is teaching? The Holy Spirit of God. I humble and be taught. And you and I are we humble and also acknowledge God. The list of battles in the chapter shows how God gave David victory after victory. And believing people think that victory comes from their own skill plus a little luck. Just as David, let's acknowledge God's role in our success and don't take credit for the work that God does. Don't take credit. Don't even try to go there. Acknowledge God. God, thank you. God, it is you who has done it. God, I bless your name. And uh, last but not least, we can say that God gives us victory. Or he has given us victory in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, we have victory. Hallelujah. Have you, been, have you opened your heart to the Lord? Have you given your life to the Lord? Have you said yes to the Lord? Yes, you can live in victory. What does the word of God say in First John chapter 5? I'm speaking to somebody here who has given his life to the Lord that we can live in victory in Christ Jesus. Let's hear what the Bible says. We could be having somebody here who is not born again this morning. Could be having somebody who has been brought along by a friend. Somebody who came and maybe a long time ago you had believed and again now you don't really, you are not sure whether you are still there. This word is yours. Listen, listen. First John 5, 11 to 13. What does the word of God say? First John 5. Are we there? Yes, good. Five, eleven to thirteen. He says, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. He who has the son has life. He who does not have the son does not have life. I write these things to you. Who will believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. Isn't eternal life a victorious life? Isn't it a victorious life? It is a victorious life. So I'm speaking to you. This morning, the Spirit of God is here. He is here to minister to us. For those who have believed, we are the children of God. And we have victory. Over all the battles that I've been talking about, we are going to, it doesn't matter the many years like Joshua, seven years. It could be 18 years like mine. Wait upon the Lord. It could be just today and in the evening. Maybe. I don't know. It could be tomorrow. But victory is yours. Just believe God. Victory is yours in whichever area that you are trusting God for. But if you have not committed your life to God, you have an opportunity to commit to God this morning. Because it starts with committing and giving giving our lives to the Lord. All what we have been talking about can be taken spiritually by those who have given their lives to the Lord because their hearts are open to receive from the Lord. But if you haven't, it is time you give your life to the Lord this morning. And we are here to help you out. We are here to pray for you. The ministry team is seated here in front. Could be you need a prayer. Could be you need, let's be on our feet standing. Let's be on our feet standing. Let's stand on our feet. It's time to respond to the word of God. I don't know what you are facing. I don't know what prayer you want to make before God this morning concerning what his word is saying this morning close your eyes, call upon God let's trust God this morning let's put the, oh let's call upon him concerning what he is speaking this morning, if you are not born again you could carry up your hand from wherever you are and then we will pray with you, if you are here you would want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, we are here, we can help you pray Pray a prayer of faith and believe God. Even you people, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, it is an opportunity to receive Jesus into your hearts this morning. You can only have victory and live victoriously if you have Jesus in your heart. Oh, hallelujah. Is there anyone in our congregation who would want to receive Jesus this morning? Jesus is the answer. Oh, hallelujah. Father, we bless you. Father, we honor you this morning. We acknowledge that, Lord, you are here and that you are speaking into our hearts this morning. 
And we believe in you if it is about our family members. The Bible says in Acts 16 verse 31 that salvation belongs to us and our families. And we are here, Lord, to believe your word this morning. Lord, salvation is coming because, Lord, you have spoken it. We are going to believe it. If it is healing, we are believing you, dear Father. And Lord, healing is coming upon us. If we are believing God for a child or whatever issue we are believing God for, it is happening because you have spoken and we are daring to believe your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Oh, we honor you this morning. Morning. Thank you that you are here, oh God. Thank you that you have come to speak to us this morning. Thank you that you have come to encourage us, our God. And we look to you, our Father, and we wait on you, our King, because you never leave, you never forsake us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We bless your name, oh Lord. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, our King. Hallelujah. We bless your name and we honor you, mighty Redeemer. We acknowledge that you alone are our God. We will trust you. We believe in your word. We will acknowledge you. We will thank you, dear Father. We will look to you concerning every issue of our lives, dear Lord. We will look not to the left or to the right. We will wait on you concerning every issue of our lives, dear Lord. You have promised. When you promise, you do, our Father. And we can hold on to you, dear Father, and your word. Because you never fail. You have never failed anyone. You will never fail. We release ourselves to you this morning. And we thank you for this first service, dear Father. As we continue to pray that you continue to minister to us. Even in the second and the third service. We believe you that you are here this morning. And you continue, dear Father Lord. And you are a good God to us. You are a faithful God. We honor you. We bless you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Hallelujah. Amen.